and welcome to this introduction to Visio class. Perhaps you're here to learn Visio because you're looking for a simple, powerful way to bring your ideas to life visually. Whether you're diagramming workflows, designing flowcharts, brainstorming, or mapping out processes for all industries, including IT, HR, healthcare, engineering, or any project that requires clear communication and organization, Visio is the way to go. So you'll notice here that I'm on a browser and I'm at office.com. Now, in order for me to get to Visio, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my little waffle menu and you'll notice here I have Visio available to me. If you don't find it there, you can very simply just go over here and click and type in Visio and it'll show up. So let's go ahead and just simply click on Visio and you'll see I'll be off and running, getting ready to create a new Visio diagram, possibly using some templates or starting from scratch. Now, for many of us, the first place we'll go is through the amazing templates that Visio has to offer. So you'll see here they have all templates, templates that are flow charts, basic diagrams, organizational charts, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at all templates. And you'll see here that on the left hand side, they're all organized by different categories. So if I click on the little chevron next to flow chart, you'll see I have basic flow chart, cross functional flow charts, etc. I have mind maps, and you'll see here that there's all kinds of different types of mind maps you can go to, organizational charts, network and cloud architecture, etc. Now, when you choose these templates, you're going to see that you're going to get a number of different shapes or what we call stencils available, depending on which flow chart or diagram you choose based off of that template. Let's go ahead and go back to general, and then I'm just going to very simply choose basic. And what I'd like to do is just explore some of these so we can see the differences as well as some of the similarities between all of them. So I'm just going to choose this basic diagram template. I click on that and right away it's going to open up to a new tab. And now you'll see I have a blank empty page with some shapes on the side ready for me to start creating. Let's go back to the tab we started with. And now if we hover over any of these, you'll see I have two options here. I can just go start creating or I can get the preview option. When you choose preview, you're gonna see how it gives me a preview with all of the individual shapes that I can see that's available to me and a nice little description and I can go ahead and click create from there. Let's go ahead and close that. And now let's try a different one. Let's go over here to organization chart and then you'll see that I have many, many different types of organizational charts available to me with different elements like pictures and different shapes and different colors, etc. So for now, I'm going to choose this company org chart. I choose preview. And once again, I'm going to get a nice little preview of it. And then if I want to continue searching, I click on this little right chevron and take a look at another template. Now, if I wanted to right now, I can go ahead and click on create to see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that's going to open up to another tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to break that down because this is a template. This is already built out. But now if you notice the difference between when I started with a blank diagram, you'll see I have different shapes on the left hand side. And of course, this one already has some shapes already built out. But the beautiful thing is that I have a number of different preset shapes and stencils that have to do with this particular template. Let's go back to another one. I'll click on close here. And now let's go over to here to networking. And then I'm just going to choose a basic network. And right away, I'm going to say create blank. And now, right away, you'll notice that I have very, very different shapes available because of the template. So it's not just giving me something that's already pre-created, but all of my shapes and stencils are going to change and reflect what that template determines. So let's go ahead and go back where we started. And let's just do a basic flow chart. So I'm going to open up the flow chart Chevron. And now let's go ahead and check out process. And now what we're going to do for now is just choose blank process. Now it should be known that you may see different options that I'm seeing because of the level of membership that I have in my account. You may have something a little bit different. So for right now, you'll notice I have all these basic shapes. I can scroll down and see all the things that are available to me. If you're looking for a particular shape, you can certainly search for it. So if I'm looking for a decision, I can just go ahead and just type out the word decision. And you'll see when I choose that, you'll see that all these decision shapes will pop up. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And this time I'm gonna say start. And now we'll see different types of start shapes are now gonna be available. Well, currently I just want to start my whole flow chart. So very simply now I'm gonna click and drag that out. And now I have a new shape. So what I'd like to do is start building out more and more shapes that are gonna be available to me. Now I know I have a few other parts of this flow chart that I want to include. So as I hover over this, you're gonna notice these little arrows appear here. This is gonna allow me to now very quickly and easily add on new shapes. So if I hover, 
you'll see that I get all these other individual shapes that I have available. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and just click on this little rectangle, and now that appears. I'll do that again, hover over to this one, and I'll do another rectangle. And then from here, I'm going to go down this time, and I'm going to choose this little oval. So very, very simple. Now let's go ahead and do another one. Go over to here to the right, and you know what? I don't see the one I want, and that's going to be a decision. And I'm going to type out decision once again. So I'll go over here up to the top, upper left, and I'm going to type out decision. Now I'm going to have this decision diamond come underneath my oval. So very simply now I'm going to click, click and drag. And now I want to be able to connect them. So now all I have to do is just hover my mouse over my oval and then wait for my little crosshair and just drag it down until it touches and lights up my diamond. And now I can reposition this so it's nice and straight and I can even bring it apart from there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting in some content. So from here, this is just going to be a very general start. So all I do is simply double click inside there and just type out the word start and then simply click away. Now at this point, what I'd like to do is zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to come over here to the lower right and I'm going to zoom in just like that and I'll be able to see it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these shapes and how we can modify them a little bit. On the top, you have this toolbar that's going to give you lots and lots of different options for basic formatting, not just formatting text, but also formatting our shapes as well as what we call connectors, these little lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my initial oval shape. And then from here, notice I can change the color to be something a little different. Let's go ahead and make that light green. And then I can make this bold and I can also make it a little bit bigger. Now what I'd also like to do is maybe move this a little bit farther to the left. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag that off a little bit. And then I'll just do the same thing from here. I'm just going to go ahead and add in some text. So I'm just going to double click on that. I'm going to say identify problem. And for this one, I'm going to say list options. And I realize that, you know what? I don't really like this shape. I think that list options will be better communicated with a different shape. So what I'm going to do now is just very simply right click on this shape. And you can see a lot of options now appears here. Cut, copy, and paste, delete. And you'll also notice that there is bring to front and bring to back if you're working with different layers. But then if you'll notice on top here, yes, once again, I have my ability to fill it in with a different color. But what I'm going to do is change the shape. So if I click on that, you're going to see how I have basic shapes, arrow shapes, process shapes, lots of really neat ones there. And it's also going to show me what shapes I currently have in the document. Let's go over here to process shapes. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and bring in this little kind of arrow there. And then I can make that come across just like this. Wait for my lines to line up like that. And then I'm going to move this guy over since it's a little bit bigger. Just notice how fluid and forgiving it is once I move my things around. Love that. That's great. Now, of course, I can change the color. And this time I am going to right click on it, change my color to this light red color. And then I'm going to make this bold and also make it a little bit bigger. For my connectors, you'll notice here is a connector right there. I'm going to go ahead and change that connector to a dashed line. So if I right click on that, you'll see that in addition to all my options that I have here, here's my connector outline. As you can see here, it's a shape outline. You can see here is connector style. In case you're wanting to make it a curved line, you can do that right from here. And you'll also see that I have different ways to make arrows going both directions, as well as changing the style to make it dashed or dotted. So I'm going to make that a dashed connector, and I'm also going to make that a double arrow. So I choose that, and now, beautiful, I have that ready to go. And let's make that a little bit more even, and that's looking pretty good. Now, you can see how we can very easily put text in. We can see how we can format our shapes. And we can also add in shapes that are not available when we hover over to the right, left, up and down. And also how we can modify our shape colors as well as our connectors. Now let's go ahead and add on an end shape. Now in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to very simply copy this and paste it. So we're going to end it right after our final diamond. So very simply, I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. And you could right click on it and choose copy and then click away. And you can right click again and then choose paste. And now we'll see, I'm going to have this at the end, right over here to the right hand side. And then watch this as I hover over it, I'm just now going to click and drag, wait for this to light up and now get it nice and even with each other. And now great. I'm going to change this to end and I click away and now beautiful. 
Let's go ahead and go back to where we were. And I'm going to go over to here to my original Microsoft 365 page. And this time we're going to start working with an organizational chart. And from our options, let's go ahead and create based off of the sales org chart. Now, once this comes up, the most significant thing you're going to notice is over here on the left hand side, all the different preset shapes you have available now, all having to do with the organizational chart. You see that all these options here and very easily you can change all these options here on the right hand side by coming over to the right hand side and changing the directional layout of it as well as some more advanced options and the node style. So let's go ahead and now just change the directional layout of it. I choose that and now notice how my organizational chart changes very quickly and easily. Now let's go ahead and go back to where we were a second ago. Now let's go back in a different direction starting from right to left. Great, I love that. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it like this. And now I'm gonna jump over here to the node style and I'm gonna completely convert the look and feel to something else. Let's go ahead and choose this first one to basic square and just wait for it to render. And now it changes to a completely different style with just one click. Let's go ahead and try a different one that's gonna have maybe more image oriented stencils available for me. And now each of these can be clickable and now I can upload a picture that's gonna fit right into there. Now, because this is an organizational chart, I can now add on different fields to all my individual stencils. So if I want the department available, telephone, email, etc. Now, if I go over here to my top toolbar, you'll see that we have organizational chart and a lot of the options that I had earlier are gonna be available here as well for my layouts. Now let's go over to here to design. Now design is gonna have amazing sets of themes built into them. Now if I check out my theme colors, you'll notice that these are preset templates for theme colors. So for example, if I change this to the gemstone theme color, you'll notice how it's gonna change on a global level across the board. Let's try another one. Let's go over to here to bubble. You'll see again how that's gonna override things on a more universal way. So that is a huge, huge time saver. And of course, all these things are movable. If I wanted to move this around, if I wanted to add on more stencils here, very easily I can do that just by again, hovering and then adding on my shapes accordingly. Now it should be known that every single one of these stencils is editable. Okay, so of course, if I wanted to change our CEO from Mel Gibson to Melissa, I can very easily do that and then give them a different title and then click away and just go from there. Now, each of these is also customizable in their own way. So if you right click on it, you're gonna get a lot of those same options if you wanted to change the colors and even change the shape to something else, you can very easily do that. And if I wanted to delete some of these or move them around, I can very easily do that as well just by simply choosing it and then hitting delete. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one, just hit the delete key on my keyboard and then move this one up to be able to see it there, giving a little more space. Go ahead and get rid of that one having full control and customization all over my entire diagram. Beautiful, I'm gonna go ahead and click away. Now it's time for me to save this. Okay, so if you wanted to change the name of it, you can very easily click up here, give it a good name, and then I'm gonna go over here to file, and then under save as, I can save it as a copy online, I can rename the file, I can download a Visio copy, and that way I can use it if you have Visio desktop, and I can also download it as a PDF or as an image. Let's go ahead and download it as a PDF. And now you'll see in my dialog box, I have the file name, I also have the type, and I'm ready to go ahead and click on save, and now that will be available for me to view as a PDF. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, and you can see, beautiful, that's all set up. Now, if we come back to the original tab, you will see if you don't like it, you can always adjust the different sizes. You have options there. You can also change all the orientation options as well. All right, so I encourage you to really try to make your own, and I would definitely suggest starting off with a template so you can see all the great options you have available to help you be more efficient and productive and also more creative a lot faster. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in future lessons. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.